Somebody's not letting me film my video. <laughs> So I just got back from a walk, so I'm a little sweaty, but basically I am getting ready for doing a Comic-Con in July, end of July, it's my first one ever, I'm very nervous, very excited, but you don't realize when you're doing all this for the first time how many little things there are to make decisions about and prepare and stuff, so um, I've been overthinking my setup probably too much to be honest, but uh, that's how I am. Was planning on being very minimal for this first one because I was like, what if I hate it? You know, what if I don't want to do this again? I don't want to spend a bunch of money on a setup that I'm never going to use again. But honestly, I did do an art market back in December. It was very small. Uh, I can post a picture of like what my setup looked like right here. Very minimal. Um, just had my prints on the table. And even that was a lot of fun. And I was like, I can definitely see myself doing this. Also, like, I think it's okay to own up to the fact that like, if you've wanted to do something for a really long time, and you just need to kind of give yourself permission to go for it. And so I think that's okay. You know, part of the process for me now is just like allowing myself to want it. Um, as silly as that sounds, it is really scary, right? Cause you could kind of quote unquote fail, but also there's some freedom in just letting yourself want it and do it. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. I watched a lot of YouTube videos about people's advice and recommendations and stuff on preparing for a Comic-Con. I think the bare bones of the setup is gonna be pretty basic. Uh, I'm gonna do like the cubes, like a lot of people do. I'm just gonna buy them off of Amazon, honestly. Like, I don't love Amazon, but I think if you are a small artist who maybe doesn't make a lot of money, like myself in my normal day job, you can give yourself some permission and grace to also buy things affordably if you need to. Like this world is not set up for everyone to buy everything not from Amazon, if that makes sense. I would love to support other small businesses. Unfortunately, that's just where my budget is at right now. So I'm gonna do, yeah, some cubes and stuff from Amazon and then I'm just gonna have some like a little stand that just is made of bamboo. Um, so I am gonna try to get some bamboo things so it's not all just plastic, try to add some like organic texture in there cause I'm kind of hippy dippy like that. I actually have an art market coming up at the end of the month and I would like to get my setup before then if I can and that way I can kind of practice. You're meowing now, huh? <laughs> So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now, but I will definitely keep updating as we go. Say hi to YouTube. Hi YouTube. Addison says hi. I wanted to quickly plug that I will be at Terrificon at Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut, July 28th through 30th, and I will be at table D2. All right, so I have this little um, sketch that I've drawn that I am going to eventually turn into, hopefully, my profile picture. And I'm undecided if I want to use this on like a business card or something as well, which is why I'm including it in this vlog. So I'm gonna do my line art and color in so you guys can see that. <laughs> Thank you. 
and stuff and I'm gonna open some of it just to take a look so let's see I think this is my little business card holder should be bamboo very simple you know I like the wood organic look so I still need to get new business cards. I'm not gonna have them in time for the art market that I'm gonna be a part of this upcoming Sunday. So I'm gonna use my old business cards still back from when I did my portrait commissions, but you know what, it still has my Instagram and my email on there. So if people wanna find me, fortunately it doesn't have my YouTube, but yeah, so at least people have the option of taking a business card if they want. I will definitely try to get the new business cards designed and shipped in time for Comic-Con though. Then I have these storage cubes because this is pretty much what I saw everyone using online when I was looking at setups and like watching YouTube videos and stuff. So I got some opaque milky ones are called they're really just white because some folks said that having opaque ones was nice for some privacy and or storage you know um also kind of helps prevent theft maybe when people can't see what's in the cubes exactly but i also got some wire ones too um yeah, these are white as well. I can easily clip my prints to the wire ones. My vision is I'm gonna stack them as like two towers on either side of this table. And then that way I can hopefully have like a banner that says my name and stuff at the top. Should be cute. I'm pretty big into the environment and environmentalism and stuff. So I just don't like the idea of doing plastic packaging for each of my prints. So I got these paper ones. I changed my print sizes to seven by 10. I used was doing eight by 10, but then there would be like white on the borders because my, here I have examples here. They weren't the perfect size for eight by 10, which would be fine, I guess, if you're framing it, but I don't know, I just, I didn't feel like it looked the most professional. Let's see if this is actually going to fit. Oh, perfect. Yay! But I believe I got a hundred of these, so hopefully that should be enough. And then this is the other thing I'm really excited about. It is, again, bamboo. I'll of course link all this stuff in my description if you're interested as well. We get two. I'm gonna do it, let's set it up. Okay, so that was a lot easier than I thought it would be actually. Like I thought I was gonna have to put in all of these myself, but they came assembled, which is nice. This is technically a cheap dish rack from Amazon. I saw some other folks in their reviews also said that they used this to hold prints. I liked that it was layered. Some other folks I had seen would get the flat dish racks, but I would like that this, you could see hopefully the different types of prints better. So I'm gonna try and put the prints in and see what it looks like. Okay, how freaking cute is this? I probably won't organize it exactly like this, all mismatchy, but I just wanted to see what each different size looked in the holder. It's because I have some horizontal prints, I have some squares, and then obviously some larger ones. I don't know if I'm gonna end up doing the larger size in the holders. 
um, or maybe I'll just display the larger ones on the cubes and then the small ones will just go in the bamboo rack and if people want a larger size they can just ask me for it and I might have it all those stored in the back because then too these won't be like so big and bulky on the table I'm not gonna have a lot on my table though I'm honestly kind of worried about that too I'm a little worried my table is gonna look like really empty I'm trying not to be too hard on myself because it's my first one I'm primarily a print sales artist at this point so you know I'm trying not to feel bad about that like that fact that most of my art just translates to prints um, since I do a lot of painting and drawing and I think my comic-con will have some sticker designs ready to go but really like since I don't have any machines or anything to make my own stickers, I have to order them all. And honestly, ordering stickers to be made is not that cheap. Um, so I might only have a few sticker designs just to have some variety on my table, but probably not more than like five at the most. So we'll see how it goes. And then I'm also doing the art market um, next Sunday. So I'll definitely vlog that a little bit so you guys can see my setup and I'll talk about how that whole day goes. Yeah, so I'm feeling good about everything I've got. I just need to cut up some prints. Um, honestly, probably the worst part of all this. <laughs> of the cubes out. I'm gonna practice putting one together for the art show tomorrow. I practiced this because it was a little not hard or weird but like there's different parts to it and stuff so I feel more confident going into tomorrow but the whole game plan is that these will be at the top and then they'll be like ah. Yeah, so all my prints will kind of hang on like that, and I think that'll work good. So, so I also have these plastic ones for the cubes, and they're like a very interesting material. It's not like hard plastic like I thought it would be, which is, I guess is good because then it less chance of like cracking and breaking, and less heavy too. So for transporting and stuff, that'll be good. But I figured I'd just assemble one of these, even though it's probably pretty similar. So this is what it looks like. I think it's pretty nice. I'm very, I'm actually 
impressed with the quality of it. I am kind of regretting taking apart the wire cube before I did this though, because then I could have practiced like stacking them and seeing how that looks. But yeah, this is one of these guys. Also, I just want to go on a rant for a second. When are we going to learn in the world to stop wrapping everything in so much plastic? Like, I can almost understand the connectors being in a bag separate from the actual pieces of the shelves, obviously. But then why does each set need to be in its own packaging like this? I'm just going to put it all in one bag anyway. Less plastic. That's all I ask for. I feel like it's not a big ask, but you know. <laughs> check out the new wagon this is funny enough um made by ohuhu who if you aren't aware um is pretty well known for their alcohol markers and i use their alcohol markers so i'm nothing but brand loyal apparently no honestly like it was 80 dollars. so compared to some of the other ones i was looking at much more affordable it seemed like uh, it was very easy to fold up and stuff because you literally just, well, let's test it out. Yeah, you literally just pull the center part and it starts to cinch together. Not bad, and then you just push it down and it opens up. I like that the handle was retractable, as you can see. So when it folds up, it's not like sticking up. Because I'm sure when I bring it to places, it's going to stay obviously open like this with all of my supplies in the back. It's kind of nice to not have to have the handle just like up like this, you know. It comes with this board that you can put in the center to add more support as well, which is good. Because I'll be having some heavy boxes with my supplies and stuff. So yeah, that's my wagon. We'll see how it works tomorrow. So apparently it's supposed to rain tomorrow during the uh, art market pride fest that I'm going to. So I'm really hoping it's not gonna. I think it's supposed to hold off until towards the end of the event. And the percentage is pretty low, but you know, I'm really worried that they could still be sprinkling or light misting throughout the day. So I'm really hoping that won't be the case because um, I sell prints, so rain really doesn't <laughs> mix well with that. And uh, I think if it's raining, I won't be able to go. That'll be a bummer, because obviously I'm looking forward to it just on its own thing, but also too, it's gonna be great practice before Comic-Con with my whole new setup and stuff. Um, and just again, kind of getting back in the swing of things of how Selling at something like this feels and works. I've only done it once and it was a pretty small event where I didn't really have that big of a setup. So yeah, the, tomorrow I think is gonna be beneficial uh, to prepare for Comic-Con. So I really hope that it doesn't get rained out, so. <laughs> tradition you have to be in my lap while I do this 
All right, hi everyone. So I won't lie to you all, it's like a month and a half later after the art market pride festival that I did. And life's just been a little crazy, so I haven't been able to give the update, but how it went was basically, it was really cold that day, unseasonably cold for a June, I mean, it's New England, so the weather's always unpredictable, but like, it was cold. I think it sprinkled maybe a handful of times, but nothing so bad that I ever had to like feel like worried about my prints, which was good. It was very windy, uh, as you probably saw on some of the footage, like with the clips, my prints kept blowing in the wind. It wasn't toppling over the setup or anything, although it did blow some of my Psyduck stickers on the ground a couple times, and eventually I learned to just put them in a box. So that helped. <laughs> Turnout, I think because of the weather with it borderline raining, wasn't great. And so I think I didn't do the best in my sales that I maybe could have done. To be honest, uh, if you're curious about numbers, I paid $50 for the table. So with the amount I sold, I only ended up making like $100. Uh, just for my prior experience at an art market, I didn't think that was that great, but I don't know, maybe it's decent. It's hard to know when you haven't really done a lot of these and everyone might have a different perspective. I also think I was in a weird spot. I was between two like nonprofit organizations. I wasn't really with the rest of the artists. And I think that was on me because I showed up a little later in the setup time. So I didn't get a prime spot. Other than that, really good experience to learn how to put together the setup. Uh, there's definitely things I want to change for Comic-Con. I think what I'm gonna do is do the opaque cubes on the bottom as I did, but have more surround of the wire ones, if that makes sense. Kind of just use the wire ones as almost a wall rather than the actual cube formations. So you also have more space and it doesn't just look weird like a bunch of cubes stacked on top of each other because that doesn't look a little bulky and a little strange, I feel like. Do I have anything else to say? Do you have anything else to say, bud? Anything else we learned from this experience? I think that might be it, honestly. So I don't wanna keep the outro too long. I'll have lots of updates before I show the whole Comic-Con thing in the next video. I'll do show off my business cards. I will show off the stickers I've ordered, things like that. And then we'll vlog the experience. I'll do a whole briefing of the experience afterward, just like this. And then I think I'm also gonna do a third video in this kind of series where I have one where I strictly just sit down and give you all the facts. This is what I bought, this is what I spent, this is how the logistical process of everything went, uh, talking about like getting tax permits and stuff like that, because that was a lot of things that I didn't know that I had questions about. And so I am gonna do, I think, a third video where it's gonna be me kind of just talking to camera and giving you guys like the full list and just the straightforward information in case you're looking for that. And on that note, <laughs> since it's goodbye, thank you so much for watching. This is my first real vlog that I've done like this. So let me know what you think. And if you actually have real feedback, I'll take it. Since again, this is the first time I've done a vlog like this. Was it like excruciatingly boring? I don't know. Let me know what you thought. If you enjoyed seeing this kind of behind the scenes stuff and uh, I will try to apply it to the next few that I do. Thank you again so much for watching. And if you aren't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. You might be confused based on my library that I have a lot of old bullet journaling videos. And then there's this one. So I'm in a little bit of a transition to doing some different content, but it's all art related. It's all creativity related. And I also might post some uh, different stuff here and there, gaming content, whatever I really feel like. Cause I'm just trying to have fun with YouTube. And that's pretty much it. Say goodbye, Edison. Bye, see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.